listening to the My Pet Podcast, the show for pet lovers of Australia and around the world. Welcome to My Pet Podcast. I'm Aria and I'm joined by vet and pet resident vet, Dr. Glenn. Hello. So fleas, the biting, jumping critters that make some cat owners' skin crawl. Yep. We're going to talk about how to prevent your cat from becoming a flea circus and what to do if your cat already has fleas. There's an overwhelming amount of new products on the market, so we're going to break down what you should use and when to use it and why to use it and all all that and more. Before we get started, though, um, just remember that this is just general advice. Um, it may or may not be suitable to you and your pet, and if you have any questions that are relevant for your pet, to speak to your veterinarian about it. Sounds good. So, why do we need to use flea control with our cats? Because mm, no one wants fleas. <laughs> <laughs> um, and they're, they're really irritating for your pet. And if your pet gets enough of them and they're breeding in your house, they're really irritating for you because they'll jump on and bite you and all sorts of stuff. Um, yeah, you, you, you just don't want to get a breeding population established in your house effectively. And yeah. cats being cats, if they're an inside-only cat, I mean, they have certainly got limited exposure to fleas. So, I mean, most of the flea problems that we see are inside-outside cats. Okay. Um, but if your cat is indoor-only doesn't go outside, you haven't got any dogs that come in and out of the house, okay, your um, likelihood of getting flea infected probably becomes less likely. Okay. Um, but an indoor-outdoor cat, if they've got access to outside, they're probably going to come across another cat or dog in their um, roamings and wanderings at some stage. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, flea um, control in that situation is definitely a very good idea. Yeah, so indoor-only cats, in a cat-only, indoor cat-only household... Yep. What, what, where would, when would you say that they need to think about using flea control? Look, I personally find it pretty hard to justify long-term flea control on a strictly indoor-only cat that doesn't ever go outside. Okay. Um, if you are taking that cat to a boarding kennel, absolutely. Um, yeah. I recommend strongly um, flea control before they go in because you don't want to take that cat to the boarding kennels and bring home someone else's um, cat's fleas. Yes. Um, and if you're not usually using flea control in the household... Okay, that's a problem because if you get a breeding population and you're not using something on your cat, all of a sudden you've got a thousand fleas and, and it's a problem. Um, so definitely get flea control before the pet goes to a boarding cattery so it's not going to bring any home. That definitely makes sense. Yeah. Um, and if you've got an inter-only cat and a dog that goes in and out, you've got to make sure that dog has got very, very good flea control on it because you don't want the dog to become a vector for them. Yes. Um, and I don't really know if fleas go through fly screens as in like fly screens that are on a house. Yeah. Um, if you had the neighbourhood <laughs> cat on the outside of the security screen yes. door with a fly screen on the inside, um, I mean, fleas are pretty small and wiggly. Um, you know, I could never say never. Um, but, uh, yeah, if your cat's fratronising through the door, I mean, maybe that's an, <laughs> <laughs> maybe that's an infection um, Having mechanism. Having chats with the neighbours. <laughs> yeah, they've pretty much got to come from, you know, from... Um, Cats or dogs, essentially. Yeah. yeah. Unless, okay. unless you've just moved into a new house, or not a new house, a house that was previously um, tenanted by someone that had a dog or cat with fleas. I mean, uh, yeah, I've had that a fair few times where, yeah. you, where you inherit someone else's flea problem, which is a problem. Um, but if you don't, um, yeah, if that's not the case, basically, yeah, inside only cats, I find it a bit hard to justify sometimes. But inside, outside cats? Definitely. Yeah. So yeah. we. St- when do you recommend people start and when do they use them? Do they use them year-round? Yeah. I mean, I recommend year-round because in Australia, um, no matter where in Australia, you're potentially going to have fleas breeding all year-round. I mean, the okay. longer it is, the, the better they do. Um, but if it's an indoor-outdoor cat, um, I mean, inside the house is probably warmer for fleas to breed all year-round, basically. Yes. Yeah. So yes. um, pretty much if you get a new kitten, um, would recommend you give it flea control because you don't want to start with fleas. Um, yes. And, and make sure that um, they're covered so you don't bring any home. And if it's an indoor outdoor cat, just keep up with that for the rest of its life. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Now, there are quite a lot of different products on the market. Can you take us through what different products there are and what the advantages and disadvantages of different products yep. are? So, I mean, broad category-wise, you've got um, – there's a few, not many. There's a few um, flea baths that you can use on cats. I mean, I don't ever recommend a flea bath on a cat because who really wants to bath their cat? Um, yeah, most, they most don't cats tend to love it. Don't really like it. I mean, some cats will tolerate it, but yeah, how do you know until you try it? Yeah, <laughs> that's right. And um, is it worth the risk and, to the owner? <laughs> yeah, and, yeah and, and I mean, it's not a great 
way of controlling fleas in the first place. So realistically, um, that brings you back to um, collars, um, top spots and oral medications. Mm -hmm. um, and within those, um, I mean, there's a very effective collar we've got now, Soresto, um, mm -hmm. which is very good flea control for an extended period, as in like eight months. Wow. Um, and it, it's very safe for cats. Um, collars and cats oh, I'm not a huge fan of necessarily um, because of um, if it's an inside outside cat um, they can get up to adventures um, and misadventures outside and and you know it doesn't happen that frequently but there's cats that can get collars caught on fences and stuff like that yeah. and, and it's a problem um, and most of them break away and and you know things end well um, but you know it's it, it's a risk factor potentially yeah uh, and that's the same as having a you know a collar with a bell on it or whatever um, yes. with a cat outside and and we see occasionally very unfortunate instances of cats getting front legs through collars and and um, if they yeah aren't seen for a while it can cause lots of damage to necks and arms and that sort of thing um, but I mean the collars are very effective control and, and they do ticks for eight months and fleas mm -hmm. for eight months so if you're in a flea tick area it's it's a control measure to, to consider certainly yeah um and then there's oral medications and topical medications um look cats and oral medications aren't necessarily the easiest way to go a lot of the time which is why there's more top spots for cats than, than there are yeah. um, oral <laughs> medications so um if you've got a really easy to medicate or they like treats um and crunchy stuff there's a few uh, options out there like comfortus which you know does a very very good job of flea control um the other sort of top spots like Revolution and Advocate and um, Brevecto and some of those do just fleas and some do fleas and ticks and heartworm and intestinal worms so, yep. um, and most of the top spots um, also do uh, ear mites which in some circumstances is a positive. Yeah. Um, ear mites aren't that common but, but they're probably more common in cats than we see in dogs most okay. of the time. Yep. Um, but a single application of those um, you know, kills ear mites anyway but and it's mostly for fleas. So when you say oral medications aren't yep. necessarily the best for cats, is that just because the cats are a bit, you know, hesitant to eat them? <laughs> yeah, I mean, they're not – most cats aren't that eager to be um, tableted, basically. Yes, um, okay. And the palatable medications that are designed as chews, well, they're not that small most of the time. Um, so, I mean, some cats you only get one chance of giving them an oral medication. <laughs> yeah. So if you're going to break up a tablet that's small enough to go down the hatch, basically – um, into three or four different bits. Well, that doesn't work very well. Yeah. The um, and the larger it is, the the harder it is to um to to administer. So I mean, I, I probably tend to recommend going for top spots realistically. Yes. For, for most cats. Yeah, yeah. It just makes life easier for everybody. Yeah, and there's there's more options as well in, in the top spot for that reason. I mean, yeah, there's yeah. no um, no one out there trying to make oral medications for cats because yes. it's much easier to put it on their skin. Basically. Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. Now, when cat owners are trying to decide on which product is best for them, yep. what decisions do they need to make and how do they know which product is right for them and their cat? Yep. Um, so, again, the, it, I mean, it depends on what parasites you're trying to control. Um, so, I mean, there's products that do just fleas. Um, there's products that do fleas and ticks. Um, and if you're in a tick area, certainly strongly recommend um, tick control because cats, you know, wander around everywhere if they're, if they're an outside cat. Yeah. Um, that being said, the medications like um, Vervecto and Revolution Plus that do fleas and ticks if you're not in a um, tick area they're still very good flea control um, yes so, okay so don't discount a product just because it does ticks as well um because it's it may well be very good flea control if fleas are your main target yeah, yeah. yeah. um and again so some of the newer top spots that do fleas and ticks and heartworm intestinal worms well that makes it a good option for people because it simplifies your your parasite regime and it comes yeah. from just one topical medication yeah. yeah that's that's yeah it makes it much easier yeah. so just necessarily because you're not in a tick area doesn't mean you need to avoid that that tick component of yeah, correct. flea medication. If it, if it says fleas and ticks, don't discount that product just because it says it does ticks. Um, yeah. Because it, it's still going to do a very good job on fleas as well. Oh, that's yeah. that's great to know. Yeah. Um, and so wh what do cat owners need to consider before they start their cat on an, a, either a new flea control medication or that they're starting something for the first time? Yeah, I mean, I mean there's very few contraindications basically, so... Um, it, it's basically pick what coverage you want and how you want to administer it, and, and that's most likely going to be in top spot form. Yes. Um, and then um, what is your other parasite requirements? But I mean, if you're an inside outside cat, you probably need 
um, you know, internal intestinal parasite control as yeah. well. Um, so that's got to be in the mix there because cats being cats, if they're outside, they're going to be catching stuff and eating it. Yes. Um, as much as people don't like to think that happens, it certainly does. Um, <laughs> so it's either, okay, use your flea control for just your fleas and then have an intestinal parasite um, control measure, which is basically a top spot or lots of different chews um, yeah. in, in tablet form um, or chewable form, yeah. Yeah, so you can either um, – there's a few cat medications that cover some intestinal worms yep. and there's a few that cover them all. So it's just a matter of making sure that between your different products you're getting all the coverage that Correct. you Correct, yeah. I mean, and tapeworms um, for cats that are hunting lizards and slugs and stuff, and that's pretty much outside cats. Um, tapeworms can become a consideration, but then it's what type of tapeworm is it? If it's spirometra tapeworm, we need four times the tapeworming dose to kill that. Um, type of tapeworm so it gets a bit complicated but yeah there's not one product that does absolutely everything yeah um, because um, topical tapeworm control is fairly difficult there's one okay. that does it um, which is profender but that does um, just intestinal worms it doesn't do any of the fleas and ticks yeah okay yeah, yeah. and that's a whole other podcast Correct. <laughs> <laughs> um so i guess tips for administration with cats um, if we're giving something to a cat orally, we yep. hope that our cat really likes food. Yeah, hope, hope, hope they like food. Oh, I hope they like the treat. I mean, there's a, a, some cats will, will take the palatable treat um, as a treat, but there's probably not that many. Yeah, um, they're so, just too clever. Yeah, I mean, they're not, they're not <laughs> dumb. They're, cats are far smarter than people are. Um, yeah. So, uh, I mean, yeah, crumbling up, breaking it up and putting in a small amount of their usual palatable food, I mean, works a lot of the time but i'm not going to say it works all the time um with so, the emphasis there on a small amount right a, a small amount yeah so not their full meal because cats being cats well they might just say well i'd rather not um and the hungry they are the more likely they are to eat it so i mean don't do it half an hour after the yeah they've just eaten the food that's been left out because that's the way most cats eat they just graze so <laughs> yeah. if you know okay we it's um chewable medication time tonight well, i'm going to pick up the food bowl and, and they're going to scream at me for half the day because they haven't got any food um, <laughs> and then they're going to be more likely to be hungry tonight when i'm going to administer the um the medication yeah, yeah sure yeah, yeah. and um or choose a top spot yeah that's it <laughs> and and if we decide just to go with using a top spot medication yeah. how do you do that um i mean obviously go by the instructions on the um on the box but i mean the main thing to to look at with cats is they're very flexible and they like grooming themselves yes um so nearly all the um on packet um administration recommendations say put it up high enough on the back of the neck that they can't turn around and lick it yeah um, and that's not between the shoulder blades um and it's not on top of the head between the ears but i sort of say what's well, halfway between those two yeah Okay. Um, so it, it, it's on the back of their neck. It's not at the base of the neck between the shoulder blades, um, and you're not putting it on their face. Yes. But, but it's it's behind the ears, part way down the neck, so they can't turn around and lick it. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And occasionally, if they've got a friend that likes to groom them and stuff, I mean, they'll still get a, a mouthful of something I don't like the taste of. And then very few of those medications are going to be a problem. Okay. Cats, if they taste something I don't like, and if you've seen it before, you know what I'm talking about. They just <laughs> yeah. Turn the tap on, like, yeah, saliva everywhere. Basically, there's drooling, there's foaming, there's and, and there's just bubbles and all sorts of stuff. And it goes for five minutes and then it stops. But, okay. But that's, I've had patients that do that when I walk in the room because they think I'm going to give them a tablet. <laughs> um, so, yeah, it, it's just a psychological response rather than a, like, a poison response or anything yeah. else. So, um, if somebody sees their cat doing that, what would you recommend the actions they take? A, Probably just wipe their mouth and wait for five minutes and it's going to stop. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. As long <laughs> as it was a medication that was designed for cats. Because oh, cats, of course, yeah. Um, um, some people fall into the very inadvisable trap of um, applying dog medications to cats. Oh, no. Um, and and um, occasionally that's okay, um, as in you're not going to kill them and I would never recommend doing it, but the medication will be okay to do that um, and not poison them, but... A lot of the topical um, synthetic pyrethrins um, that are suitable for um, flea and tick control in dogs um, are, are very, very toxic to cats. Yeah, um, and okay. And have um, seizures and all sorts of troubles. Yeah, um, so okay. So yeah, never put a dog medication on a cat. Is it good um, baseline? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Make yeah. sure that it's got the on-label use for cats. 
cats. Correct. Yeah, That's but if it, but if it's designed for cats and, and you put it on um, like too low and they get a mouthful of it, they'll just salivate for five minutes and then after that they'll be fine. And it's just because it tastes gross. Because it tastes like crap. Yeah. yeah. And I guess other than that concern, how safe are these products? A few people have safety concerns about putting um, you know this sort of medication on their yeah. cat. What what's what's the safety of them like? Really, really good. Um, cats are weird. Cats have got a few specific toxicity problems that it, only a sniff of something that is fine with lots of other stuff kills them, okay. um, like Panadols and other bits and pieces. Um, but medication-wise, that's designed for cats, they're very, very, very safe. Um, yeah. I mean, apart from you know top spot medications, you can never say that out of ten thousand cats one or two of them are going to get a reaction at the skin site where the topical medication goes on. And, and I mean, that's the main potential side effect of any topical medication. Okay. Um, an individual you know, might have a, a, a skin reaction, like a bit of redness or a bit of itchiness or something where, yeah. the, where the medication's gone on. Um, and look, there's plenty of cats that don't like the feeling of stuff on their skin. Yeah. Um, and when you're applying a top spot, um, you, you do everything right. And um, they just don't like the feeling of it and they'll go scampering off. Um, yeah. down, down the hallway. I mean, one thing with administration, it, it's got to go on at the skin level. Um, so yes. if you've got a fluffy cat, you've got to part the hair um, to, to put it on up there on the back of the neck there. Yeah. Um, and I, it's sort of a habit and a lot of the recommendations on the box don't say it, but I sort of never just go squeeze and put it all on at once, like okay. as, as a single squirt. I just sort of um, put a drop or two on and then it spreads out and put a drop or two on and it spreads out. So do it over like five to ten seconds okay. um, rather than just going squirt because if you go squirt and they shake and scamper off down the hallway, I mean, not all of it's necessarily going to go yeah. on the pet and it goes up the wall and goes in your face and all that sort of thing. Any um, tips to make it a bit... To sort of help them become a little bit more comfortable with it? Look, apart from just showing them affection and, and I mean, if it's it, – it, most of the time less is more with cats. I mean, the more you try and restrain them, the more worked up they get. And, yeah. And, and that usually isn't the way to go. Um, if – They've just woken up and they want to go crazy and run around the house for the next 10 minutes. That's probably not the time to, yeah, <laughs> to put it on. Right. Um, but sneaking up to them and applying it while they're asleep um, and thus scaring them and them, them running off probably isn't the right idea either. I mean, yeah. just you know, spend five minutes giving them a good pat and, and you know, handling that area plenty without pulling out the um, without the medication. But I mean, cats are clearly one of my cats um, used to have the little top. Um, there was a little tick when you twisted the lid yeah. um, on the top of the um, the topical medication, and just like any little clicking noise with anything, he just sort of starts squinting because that's another thing that cats do sometimes. Because most of the top spots they've got um, like acetone or, or alcohol based carriers that helps it get okay. absorbed into the skin. Yeah. Um, I mean, cats are really sensitive to, to volatiles, um, so yeah, there's plenty of cats sort of squint a little bit when you put it on just because they're they're so sensitive. Yeah. Um, and that's not hurting them; they just they just know there's something going on. Yeah. yeah. He, he used to just like start squinting if you heard a little click of some sort, basically, because yeah. he thought that was coming. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've heard people say that they know the sound of the foil being opened yeah, as oh, well. Yeah. They're yeah. so they, clever. They know what happens before what happens happens. They're, yeah. They're pretty <laughs> that's right. And and dogs. You know, you can give treats and, and try and placate them that way. There's not many cats who will accept treats happily as bribery to stand still for long no, enough to do something. They're yeah. too clever for yeah. that. Yeah. <laughs> um, so is there anything else that you want to cover? Not really. I mean, I think that's the main thing. If we, um, yeah, except, okay, we, we need long-term flea control for cats that are inside, outside cats, definitely. Um, you, you don't want fleas to become established in your place. Yeah. Um, if you have inherited a flea population or for whatever reason you, you have a flea breeding population at home, um, the newer medications that kill fleas very quickly and every flea that comes in contact with the pet um, dies. I mean, dead fleas don't lay eggs um, and dead fleas don't keep biting pets. Yes. But if you've got a... Um, life cycle of fleas established in the house in the carpet in the back of the cupboard where the cat um, sleeps on your bed where they yeah. sleep i mean controlling the fleas in that environment means that you're going to get on top of the flea situation a lot faster yeah um, and um, that might mean using you know flea bombs um, in the house as long as you haven't got fish tanks um, that c can sterilize the eggs that are there and kill all the lifestyle uh, life cycle stages um, in the house. You just get on top of things a lot faster. Um, yeah, okay. If you use really good flea control on the pet, you'll eventually get there. Um, 
and it some, takes a long time. Takes longer, and I mean, a lot of medications they kill fleas really quickly. Um, but if you've got you know ten thousand fleas yet to hatch out in the house, and you're going to rely on the cat to mop up all those fleas, yeah, you know, they're still going to be getting bitten. Um, it's a lot less than they would be if they weren't on protection. Um, yes. But they're still going to get bitten. Yeah. yeah. Um, and the other thing is, um, you know, every pet cat or dog in the household needs to be on protection because yes. there's no point the cat's being on prevention and the dog's not being on prevention and, and the dogs are acting as a reservoir um, yeah. of, of fleas or vice versa. Yeah. Yeah, yep. yeah that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, that, that's yeah. the main things. Wonderful. Yep. Well, thank you for listening. Um, and if you have any further questions, um, you can speak to your vet about what's right for you and your cat. Otherwise, we have some great articles on the Help Centre at vetandpetdirect.com.au about um, what flea control there is out there and how it all works. You can see our range of flea control products for cats at vetandpetdirect.com.au. You can also jump into the chat there and have a chat to one of our vet nurses. If you have any questions, um, you can also give us a call. Uh, And um, thank you for listening and we hope that you guys can all stay flea free. Till next time. Thanks, guys. Thanks. Bye.